we are now going to look at functional groups of organic compounds. For hydrocarbons themselves, we had our alkanes with only single bonds between the carbons, alkenes with double bonds between at least one set of carbons, alkynes with triple bond uh, between a set of two carbons, and aryl compounds, the aromatic compounds based on a six carbon ring with alternating single and double bonds. We're going to add other elements on. In this case, uh, we're looking at that uh, oxygen, oxygen and nitrogen. We can create additional functional groups. So first one is when we have a OH group on it. So it's not a hydroxide because it's not ionic. It's a hydroxyl group, uh, but it creates an alcohol and um, and organic compounds. The ending of the name identifies the primary functional group. So uh, if alcohol is a primary functional group, we'll end with an OL on the name. And um, we also identify alcohols as being either primary, secondary, or tertiary. A primary alcohol will have two hydrogens on the same carbon as the alcohol group. Methanol, our smallest alcohol, has three hydrogens on the carbon. The next one up with two carbons, ethanol, the um, carbon that holds the alcohol group has two hydrogens on it. So it has one additional carbon attached onto it. And we can go up from there. So a propanol, a three carbon chain with the alcohol on the end. So the one in this case tells us where the alcohol is on that chain. You don't need it on the ethanol or the methanol because there's no other options available. So one propanol is a primary alcohol. The carbon that holds that um, alcohol has two hydrogens on it. A secondary alcohol, there will only be one hydrogen on that carbon that holds the alcohol group. Uh, and this is a two propanol. So one propanol has the alcohol on the end. Two propanol will have it on the second carbon. The common name for that is isopropanol. So that's how we buy this. So the two propanol is a systematic name, but we don't use it much. A tertiary alcohol will have no hydrogen on the carbon that holds that alcohol group. Uh, so this is our smallest tertiary alcohol. This is our smallest secondary. So the longest chain here would be three carbons. So it's a propane or propanol with the alcohol on the second carbon. And that same carbon holds a methyl group. So it's a two methyl, two propanol. And the reason why we care about the what's primary, secondary, tertiary, because they will tell us what types of reactions are available when we uh, are reacting with these alcohols or metabolizing them in our body. And ether is the oxygen stuck between two carbons. And we're going to use the uh, word ether as the end of our name on this. So our smallest one would be a, a carbon, oxygen, carbon. So methyl group, oxygen, and methyl group. So that would be a dimethyl ether. We could have a, a single carbon on one side, a double carbon on the other side. So we have a, a methyl group and an ethyl group. So we're going to go alphabetical, ethyl, methyl, ether. Here's two ethyl groups on both sides. That's a diethyl ether. And this is the line notation for diethyl ether. So we have a carbon on the end, a carbon at the bend, the oxygen, carbon at the bend, a carbon at the end. If we have a 
carbon oxygen with a double bond and have a hydrogen on the same carbon, then we have an outer hide. And in the uh, systematic naming, the end of the name will have an AL on it, an AL outer hide. The um, first two examples, most one would be a single carbon with two hydrogens in that double bond oxygen. The systematic name would be methanol, but uh, the original, the older name, formaldehyde, is still being used, uh, is accepted as a valid name. And so we don't have to use the methanol. With two carbons, we have our aldehyde group, uh, two carbons would be um, uh, eth ethane, so the systematic name would be ethanol, but again, the uh, older name has been accepted as being uh, valid, so that would be acetaldehyde. And um, when we metabolize ethanol, one of the products that we go through is acetaldehyde. If that um, carbon holding the double bond oxygen, that's the carbonyl group, that carbonyl group doesn't have any hydrogens on the carbon, then we are dealing with a ketone. So the carbonyl group is in the middle of a chain. Up here, the carbonyl group is at the end of a chain. So that's a ketone, and the suffix is O-N-E. So our smallest one would be a three-carbon chain with a double, the carbonyl group in the middle one. And the common name is acetone, and that is a, a valid accepted name. Uh, the systematic name would be based on propane, it would be propanone. And there's no other spot for that carbonyl group to be, so we don't need to show where it is. With a four carbon chain, um, we're getting ready in case there's additional side groups here, so we call, call that a two butanone. We're going to be calling counting from the right side, one, two, so the ketone group is on the second carbon, so that'll be a two butanone. Now, if we combine two groups, the, um, a aldehyde with a alcohol on the same carbon, we get a new functional group. That's, this is a carboxylic acid. And the um, second oxygen, help to stabilize any negative charge on the hydroxyl oxygen. So it allows this hydrogen to come off. So these form weak acids for it. And um, the systematic naming system will be based on an oic acid. Uh, our two smallest ones still run off of the traditional name. So our smallest one would be with one carbon. And um, the systematic name would be in methanoic acid, but the traditional name that is accepted is the formic acid. And uh, this is used by some species of ants as a chemical weapon defense system. And um, with two carbons, uh, the systematic name would be ethanoic acid. Uh, we know as acetic acid, so that is the accepted name is acetic acid. And this is a component of vinegar, which we use for flavoring and for food preservatives. And the acid group always has to be the end of a chain. So uh, if we were to identify other side groups on the carboxylic acid, this would be carbon number one. We're going to look at uh, some reactions on how to convert between these, but uh, next one we can make from a carboxylic acid and alcohol, an ester. So we have uh, our uh, carbonyl group with an oxygen on it, but instead of a hydrogen on it, we have another carbon on that one. And um, this is replacing the hydrogen on an acid. So that's going to be part of our first part of a name, that functional group with a YL ending. And then the part of the acid will have a 08 uh, ending on it. 
So our smallest uh, ester possible, we have a, a carbon with a carbonyl and the oxygen on it, and then one carbon on the other side of the oxygen. So that would be a methyl methanoate. And let's uh, do this a couple more times to make sure we're comfortable with the direction here. Here we have two carbons on the, what would be the acid side of this oxygen here. So we have um, a methyl group on the hydrogen side. So we do a methyl, and then on the acid side, ethanoate. The other direction around, we have a, um, the uh, single carbon here, uh, and then where the hydrogen would be, that would be a uh, two carbons, so that would be ethyl uh, methanoate. Although the other name that we'd be seeing on this is the based on the traditional name that would be our ethyl formate. coming from our formic acid. So when we add a nitrogen in there, get two types of uh, additional functional groups. So a uh, nitrogen by itself in compound will give us a, a mean. And uh, just like the alcohols, we have primary, secondary, tertiary means. So if we only have one carbon on the nitrogen, it's a primary mean. If we have two carbons, so the R's represent a generic carbon group. Uh, so if we have two carbons on it, it's a secondary mean. If we have three carbons on it, it's a tertiary mean. So our smallest possible mean will only have a single carbon on the nitrogen, and that's a methyl mean. Having two of those on this becomes a dimethylamine. Having a, a methyl group and an ethyl group go alphabetical is a ethyl methylamine. And then the last functional group that we're looking at are the mids. So we have the carbonyl group, like a carboxylic acid, but instead of the OH group on it, we have a nitrogen instead of a oxygen so that makes it an emit and um, if that nitrogen has only has two hydrogens on it it's a primary amid if that nitrogen has a carbon group on it it's a secondary amid and if it has two carbon groups on it it's a tertiary amid and uh, the name is going to be based on the that chain that contains that carbonyl group and uh, the um, suffix would be animid, you know, except for our common name. So our, a small one with two carbons uh, would be acetamid. And then to make it a little bit bigger, show the naming convention, we have a, a three carbons here, the nitrogen with another methyl group on it. So the three carbons will give us our propanamid and then to show the methyl group we're going to use n instead of a number so we'd be numbering the carbon chain here but to show that the substitutions on the nitrogen we just have capital n so it's an n methyl propanamid so this is practice uh, identifying these uh, functional groups in some compounds So some compounds that we can run across in our lives. Caffeine. So we have our carbonyl group with the nitrogen. Carbonyl group with the nitrogen. So these are amides. We have some nitrogens without the carbonyl group, and these are amines. Some adrenaline, we have a OH, OH, 
OH with no carbonyl group nearby, so these are alcohols. We have a nitrogen with no carbonyl group, so that's an amine. For um, uh, diphenylhydramine, uh, if we add a little um, hydrochloric acid to this, that would uh, form a salt that uh, is sold as Benadryl. Uh, we have a nitrogen with no carbonyl group, so that's an amine. We have a oxygen between two carbons, that's a ether. Another one up here, we have this uh, carbonyl group, no oxygen or nitrogen associated with it. So it's a ketone. And we see down here that we had our amine built into the name. We have our ketone built into the name. These are more complicated, so they get their own naming systems. A triglyceride, this is a, the main component of a fatty acid or oil, a vegetable oil. And um, we have the carbonyl with oxygen, three different spots. So these are esters. Down here we have a carbonyl with oxygen, so another ester. Carbonyl with oxygen with a hydrogen on it, that's a carboxylic acid. And um, that's aspirin. I will porphyrin. We have our Boxylic acid. One of the main components of vanilla, vanillin, we have uh, a aldehyde. Oxygen between two carbons, that's the ether. And OH with no carbonyl group nearby, that's the alcohol. Last one here, ephedrine. We have our Nitrogen with no carbonyl, so that's an amine. And we have an OH with no carbonyl, so that's, that's alcohol. Um, 